Hey, so good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Virtual VTSO International Convention 2021. So we are Huang and Hong, and as the presentation's moderators, we are delighted to see all of you here today in this presentation. So during the presentation, if you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to leave them in the chat box so that we can gather them for easy response in the five to 10 minute Q&A session at the end. And we gladly welcome Ms. Daute Vengham in this 30 minute presentation which is entitled Applying Role Play Activities to Develop Students' Pragmatic Competence Using the Textbook Innovation Pre-Intermediate. So about our presenter, Ms. Holm is a lecturer at Vietnam National University. She received her MA degree in English Linguistics from the University of Languages and International Studies, Vietnam National University. And she has been teaching learners of different levels, ages, and backgrounds, including English major students, students learning English for special purposes, primary, lower, and upper secondary teachers from various parts of Vietnam. Her research interests include pragmatics, language teaching methodology, and teacher professional development. Please welcome her. All right, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, today, I'll be talking about how to apply role play activities to de develop students' uh, um, pragmatic competence in spoken English classroom. Uh, so my presentation will consist of three parts, as you can see on the screen. Uh, first, in the introduction, I will talk about some reasons why I decided to choose this topic of study and the research questions. And in part two, I'll be discussing a little bit about the uh, literature review, what is pragmatic competence, and some benefits to applying pragmatic, uh, applying role play activities to enhance students' pragmatic competence. Uh, and lastly, part three will be about some implications for language teaching. So first, um, what is pragmatic competence? Uh, so um, according to Thomas, pragmatic competence is the ability to communicate um, effectively and it, it involves knowledge beyond the level of grammar. And Casper uh, gives a more detailed definition. Uh, he defines pragmatic competence as the uh, ability to for learners to use a uh, speech act in socially appropriate ways as part of the speaker's knowledge of the target language. As, you, as we can see here, um, both of these definitions focus on the appropriate appropriateness of language use, which plays a significant role in having a successful interaction, social interaction for students. Um, so now I will be talking about the reasons why I um, decided to study about students' pragmatic competence. Um, yeah, uh, so um, first, research into pragmatic competence has um, proven um, that um, a lot of um, e even proficient learners of English lack um, necessary pragmatic competence, right? Um, however, and there exists a disparity, a gap between um, grammatical and pragmatic competence. However, um, relatively less attention has been paid to how classroom-based instruction can contribute to the um, to pragmatic competence of foreign language learners. Um, and the reason is because uh, language teaching for many years has devoted um, to grammatical uh, accuracy um, so that the communicative function of language seems to be put aside by a lot of teachers. And many teachers rely solely on the materials from the language textbook. So their students will not develop sufficient level of grammatic competence for effective communication in English. So as a result, um, the lack of grammatic knowledge can uh, lead to inappropriate behavior for student language learners. Even though they have a lot of structures and a lot of vocabulary, good vocabulary, they cannot still, sometimes they, they can still have to face um, with the breakdown in, in social interaction. So noticing that many, many English learners lack necessary grammatic competence uh, leading to their lack of confidence when uh, talking to foreigners, I decided to uh, do this study on how to apply role play activities to enhance students' pragmatic competence so that they can become more confident and successful in their social interaction. So now this study has been carried out to answer two questions here. We see the first and the second questions. 
Um, the first one, what is the role of grammatic competence in the acquisitions of target language? And the second one, how to develop students' grammatic competence in spoken English classroom based uh, using their um, role play activities. So um, we know that grammatic competence play a crucial role in helping learners of English have successful uh, social interactions. According to Barbido Halik, um, speakers who do not use grammatically appropriate language run the risk of appearing uncooperative at least are more seriously rude or insulting in that context. So um, they cannot like acquire successful um, social interaction, right? Um, as I have mentioned before, Casper defines grammatic competence as the ability by learners to use speech acts appropriately, right? Um, as part of the speaker's uh, knowledge of the target language. So that now we are going to talk a little bit about speech act. What is speech act? Um, so for example, I have, I have this sentence. Um, the tea is really cold. So I have this sentence. Do you think that it's easy for our students to understand this sentence? It's a simple sentence, right? There is no new words here. So do you think that it's easy for our students to understand this sentence? You can you can yeah express your ideas in the chat box okay um, so it's a very simple sentence and a lot of people may think that there is no new words there the structure is very simple it's very easy for our students to understand the sentence but maybe it's not really true so um, what does a speaker really mean in this situation so I give you some I can give you some more information about the context okay. Um, in the first situation, it's summer day and he feels very hot and thirsty, right? And she gives him a cup of tea and he says, this tea is really cold. And what does he mean? What is that? When he says, this tea is really cold. So what does he mean? Sure, um, it's a praise, right? So he likes the tea. So now we have another situation. Um, another situation. It's a cold winter day and she gives him a cup of tea and then he takes a sip and then he says, this tea is really cold. So what does he mean? Um, so you can easily see that in the second sentence, um, in that context, it's a complaint, right? Actually, he does not like the tea because it's too cold because it's winter day and the tea is cold. So he does not like it. So we can see that the same sentence can mean different things in different contexts. Or we can say that the same utterance can perform different functions, different actions in different contexts, depending on what the speaker really means in that context, right? So speech acts can be defined as actions performed by utterances, as you can see here. For example, you can use words to apologize to somebody, right? You can use words to complain about something, or you can use words to um, promise something, to invite somebody to your dinner party, or to request somebody to do something for you. So you can use words to do a lot of actions, okay? Um, so there are different types of speech acts um, because we don't have a lot of time. So I think I'm just going to talk very, very briefly about these types. Uh, the first type is called declarations. So um, it's a kind of speech, speech act um, in which you use, speaker uses his utterances to change the world around him. For example, we have, um, an example here, for example, the boss um, talks to uh, his employee, one of his employees who is late for work. He says, you are fired. So he used just one sentence, just one utterance to, to complete an action of firing someone from his job. So it's actually, he is doing, he is using his work to change the world around him. And the second um, type is called representatives in which the speaker like represents the world as he or she believes it is, right? It can be statements of facts, it can be assertions, it can be conclusions or descriptions. And uh, the next tab is called expressives in which the speaker states what he feels uh, like statement of pleasure or pain or likes or dislikes. And the next tab is called directives. So in which um, the speaker use um, utterances to uh, get someone else to do something for him, for example, to um, it can be commands, orders, requests, or suggestions. 
So the next type is called commissive, the fourth, right? Um, so in this type of speech act, uh, the, the fifth one, right? Uh, in which the speaker um, use words to commit themselves to some future action, like promises, threats, refusals, pledges, or um, pledges, or for example. So in this presentation, I will discuss um, some ways to apply reply activities to improve students' knowledge of different speech acts and help them improve their pragmatic competence. Um, and the final aim is to help students uh, to help students to be able to communicate more successfully in their in English. So um, this this presentation is about applying role play activities to enhance student pragmatic competence, right? So I'll be talking a little bit about role play activities. I guess that we all know what a role play activity is, right? Um, so this is a, this is a definition from taken from Oxford English Dictionary. And as you know, that role play activity is any speaking activities when you um, either put yourself in another person's shoes or when you stay in your own shoes, but you put yourself in an imaginary situation. So now we talk a little bit about why we should use role play activities in our speaking lessons. So there are some reasons why uh, we should use role play activities in our speaking lessons. Um, first, Role play activity is fun, right? So it can increase our students' motivation to speak. And moreover, moreover it can help a lot of shy students to um, by providing them with a mask. So students feel that they are not showing their true personality. They are not showing their true identity so that they feel like they're acting someone else and they don't need to be shy anymore and they can express themselves more freely, right? And also we can offer students with a wider range of situations uh, in which they are required to use all, um, to use and develop their uh, language structure, certain language structures. Um, so, um, so now I, I'll talk about some tips, some advice, some tips. Uh, teachers should consider when using role play activity in their speaking class. Um, so I'll show you here. Uh, first, uh, we should prepare students for our success and preparation is very, very important in my opinion. Um, teachers should like pre-teach uh, the language the students will need and make sure that this language has been presented. Um, since students may need extra help, um, extra support of having the language on the screen or on the board, uh, so that whenever they like, because it's new language, so whenever they they um, get stuck or they forget the structure, they can just look at the screen or look at the box. So it's there and they feel very confident. Our teachers can feel, can even spend time beforehand drilling the um, structures um, that the students are going to, to use. Um, and when the role play began, the students will feel like they are very confident to take part in the discussion because they have enough structures, enough vocabulary, enough uh, language input before they can take part in the activity. And second, the role, role of the teacher in the role play activity is rather diverse. Okay, so teacher can be a facilitator, right? Who helps students with the fitting in of new language, or they can also be a spectator who watches, um, monitors the whole role play activity and um, take notes of some common mistakes and then give comments at the end of the, uh, of the role play activity. All right. A teacher can even become, uh, can even play the role of a participant. So sometimes in, uh, in the role play activity, teacher can take part in, in that role play activity herself when she feels like uh, necessary or appropriate, right? Um, and third, number three, um, when setting up the context, teachers should bring their um, situations to life. So we can, we can use a lot of ways to bring the situations, the lessons to life. Uh, for example, you can use prop, um, or simply we can just rearrange the furniture, I mean the tables and chairs. Um, so to, to make our classroom become a tourist information desk, tourist information office or doctor's clinic, for example. So um, that's one way, right? 
And fourth, number four, the situation should be real and relevant. As I'm, I mean, the, the roles of the students should be as real and familiar, real to life as possible and familiar, easy for the students to imagine. Um, so sometimes teachers can may want to use some language one um, to explain like Vietnamese or, yeah, for example, to, to explain the, about the local culture and the situation to make sure that the students understand um, their situation and what they have, they have to do in that situation. And also there are many ways to correct mistakes when using group activity, but usually I, I think that it's not appropriate if the teacher ju just jump in and correct every mistake students make because this would be very demotivating for our students. Uh, so instead, we can let them do some self-correction after the role play activities. If you, if you are do, teaching online, it's very easy for the students to just record their conversation and then they can reflect on the language used afterwards. Um, or you can do some peer feedback. It's, it's, very, it's very useful. Um, teacher can take notes of some common mistakes and, um, and then um, she can give uh, some uh, feedback at the end of, of the class or at the end of the activity or in the next lesson. So it depends on the teachers. Um, so here are some suggested following the following session are some nine, actually there are nine activities. Teachers can incorporate into their classroom to help develop students' grammatic competence. Um, each activity will deal with one particular speech act. For example, the first one, um, can be used for the topic in unit six. How are you? It's about health, right? This activity helps students uh, practice the speech act of giving advice. So I, I'm going to explain that just a little bit. Um, in this activity, students are divided into two big groups like doctors and patients. And then students will have three minutes to read the card, prepare for the appointment in their, uh, with their partners. Of course, the teachers are taught uh, necessary structures and vocabulary beforehand. And, um, and then after that, the patients will, um, each doctor will sit on a table. I, I took um, this picture from the internet just to give a sample, to give a, an example so you can see how it works. Um, so the doctor will sit at one table and the students, patients will um, go around the class just like they are going around um, the hospital and they have to find which doctor uh, can help him with, uh, can help him or her with his or her health problem. So you can see um, this is uh, the road cut. So if the student's proficiency is weaker, you, you may want to simplify it a little bit with uh, shorter sentences and simpler words. So it depends. Uh, and or you may want to give some more feeding language. So that's good. Um, the second proper activity can be used for topic um, in unit number 11. Uh, sorry, unit, yeah, getting around. So uh, this is a situation. Um, this activity is adapted from British, an activity that I took from British culture, but it's rather appropriate for this situation. So the students are going to work at the, at the, the um, situation first. The situation is that um, the, the students are going to work in group of five and each group will be a family. And the situation is that the family has just one, um, yeah, which one, uh, um, 1000 million dollars on the lottery and the students study their, uh, will study their cards. Here is the card and the, Father is going to open their, is going to begin their family discussion with, I'm so happy to tell you that. Okay. Um, and then he in, announced the, the good news and then they are going to discuss with each other on one place that they want, are going to, to travel together. And um, activity number three is uh, focuses on the, um, on the each act of giving suggestions. Okay. So uh, for example, um, the topic is about society or um, urbanization. It can be one of the topic. Okay, so um, the students are going to work in pairs and students number one, 
clearly um, a person who has just been elected mayor of Hanoi City. And um, today he has an interview with a BBC News presenter about some social issues in Hanoi. And student number two will be a BBC pre News presenter. And today he has an interview with the new mayor of Hanoi City. So maybe you would like, you may want to put some suggested interview questions on the screen or on the board first, so that the students can prepare for this activity, um, can, can may need um, less time to prepare for this, acti this activity. Um, this is another activity that focuses on uh, the speech acts of complaining, right? So um, the topic is uh, about problems. So there is a problem here. There is a situation here. Um, the situation is that um, now it's 7 a.m., right? Early in the morning, a resident from room 202 comes up to complain about the terrible, terrible noise in room 102. And there are two row cards for student number one and student number two that you can see on the screen. And the students have to um, make a conversation to discuss about this problem. One person is going to complain about the, uh, the noise in room 102 and the other is going to explain his situation and ask um, for like, um, like some sympathy or something. So, so um, the students will read the cards and they will know what they have to do in the conversation. Um, here is another activity focusing on giving advice. Okay, um, the topic is um, about health. Topic is how are you about health? So the students can do an interview with a famous, uh, a famous person like student A uh, is going to be a famous model in Vietnam and student B is going to be a reporter from uh, Sông Mới or VTV1, um, for example. So the two students are going to do a, an interview with each other about how to keep uh, fit um, and how to become more healthy, right? And give you some tips about giving with some tips about how to uh, keep fit and, and, and be healthy. And the ad next activity is um, going to focus on refusing speech acts. So it's a situation uh, in which a Vietnamese student um, invites an American student to um, have dinner, a dinner party with his family and, and the American student does not want to eat so many so, so, so much food uh, that, ha that he has been invited. So, so um, it's about refusing food politely. And there are some other, um, some other activities that I have designed. For example, it's about um, inventions. So we can, um, we can hold something like a, a word ceremony and each group of students is going to um, play the role of the group of inventors. Uh, who invent some different things like computer, power pen, or even an imaginary product, and then they are going to um, be the candidates for the Nobel Prize for the greatest achievements. And then after that, they are going to try to persuade all other inventors so that they can win this honor honorable prize. Um, there are some other activities here. Okay, so... Um, uh, a lot of teachers complain that their class is too, um, their class, their classrooms are too, too small, too narrow, and um, they have very crowded class, so they cannot uh, set up like proper activities in their class because there is not much space for students to move around. So I can show you. This is an example. This is one of my class, one of my classes. Um, the classroom is very small and. And um, it's a crowded class. There is not much room for students to move around, but we can ask students to stand up and do uh, pair work and group work like this. I can show you some, share some sound here. So this is how. <laughs> Okay, uh, so just an example of one of my class I just want to share. And um, these activities can be applied to 
uh, high school students. Uh, for example, those activity can be used for students in grade number 10, grade 10, a unit to your body and you is also by health, right? And the second activity can be used for um, grade 11, uh, unit eight. So we can easily uh, change the destination to suit um, Uh, to choose, uh, sorry, to choose, uh, we can easily change the destination to suit uh, the lessons or to suit just students. Because a lot of, like different students from different cities in Vietnam, for example, they have different experience and they want to go to different places. So it's, it's good if, if we can understand our students and we can choose the place that they really want to go so that they have the motivation to speak, right? To debate, okay? And um, some suggestions for a um, great 10, 12 uh, unit to organization, right? About um, problems in social issues in Hanoi, for example. Um, okay. Um, refusing, we can use that uh, for unit number, 12, number five in, in uh, great 12 cultural identity, for example. So, um, so those activities can be applied for us high school students as well. That's what I, that's what I'm trying to to say. Um, so those are just some things. Just I just want to share with you about uh, using robot activities uh, to enhance students' multi pragmatic competence in, in spoken English classroom. And I hope that we um, can apply these for. Role play activities like this and other kinds of activities to um, to broaden the um, situations in the English classroom so that the students can um, can have more knowledge about um, um, like pragmatic competence so that they can perform um, more successful in more successfully in their social interactions. And thank you very much for your um, attention. And then if you have any questions, please um, type in the chat box. I'm really to answer your questions. Okay, I think I am finished. Okay, thank you, Ms. Hong, for your great presentation. So now we are happy to receive any questions that you may have for our presenter. Uh, I see that there is a question from Lu Nguyen. I love doing role plays in my class. Can you share your topic suggestions via email? Uh, you mean uh, you want me to send my PowerPoint stories via email, right? I think so. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so you just have to send me your email and then I can send you some um, topic suggestions. I mean, the PowerPoint file, maybe some other suggestions on uh, this topic by our email, all right? Okay. So do you want to share something else? We do want to, okay. So right. Okay, Lou, we just send you his email. And he said thanks a lot. Okay, so if you don't have any other questions, we would like to end our session here. Okay, thank you all for participating. We wish you all the best on behalf of BIC 2021. Thank you very much. Thank you, um, all of you, and especially the coordinators for your support. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.